there is a divergence between um, uh, science and religion because religion discounts science for faith for faith so when I use the word God um, I don't mean it in the in the same sense that somebody who belongs to a religious doctrine means that and my definition of of God is almost synonymous with the universe, the word the universe. Um, it's just, it's not consciousness, I suppose, because the universe is objective, and, um, and consciousness is both objective and subjective at the same time. Um, The, the universe itself is extremely indifferent to what happens or doesn't happen. Um, and, and that's true for humanity, too. The universe itself is indifferent to the fate of humanity. humanity. But the consciousness of humanity s tends to sort of govern its own fate. So I think that... Um, that religious, all religious texts are sort of trying to creatively or artistically or, or trying to artistically represent in the form of, of mythology um, the story of, of consciousness. Um, and, and if you, if one were to view the Bible or the Upanishads um, or any religious text from that perspective, it would it opens it would open up a whole new understanding because they're the the tech the myths themselves are all extremely relevant. Um, you know all the stories in the Bible and in the Quran or you know the Upanishads, they're very relevant to the, the story of human consciousness. And if you, if you read them like fiction, the way you would read a fiction book, um, you would set it down feeling like, wow, that, was, that really um, gave me an awareness of, of some aspect of my consciousness that, you know, um, or of, of the nature of my consciousness. Does that answer the question a little bit? Don't. What constitutes constitutes consciousness? Yeah, and what is it exactly? Like why is it that's a mystery. That's a continuous mystery. That's not known to science, um, and and religion <laughs> sort of makes uh, uh, inaccurate guesses about it. So it's it's an extreme mystery. Um, but it is stuff that is talked about in religions. Um, it's talked about in science too. I mean, in, in you know, if you, we're talking about on like about metaphysics or something, the the nature of consciousness comes into play. But there's nobody knows. It's not yet known to any human um, what constitutes consciousness. We can we can contemplate it um, through the mediums of uh, of both uh, biochemistry and um, and uh, computer programming, though, because uh, on a on a biochemical level, there is a, a starting point and ending point. Um, to there's a theoretical starting point and ending point to consciousness. And consciousness tends to um, express itself with organic molecules. Organic chemistry um, is is the entire subset of chemistry that's devoted specifically to studying life forms and all life forms have are, are made of at least on this planet all life forms are made of the same basic elements um, for the most part that's you know carbon oxygen uh, nitrogen um, phosphorus uh, 
and oh, no, hydrogen. <laughs> Life has a nature, and and consciousness is pretty much synonymous with life. It's, it's um, when when a form is is conscious, um, it responds to its environment more. So if you if you if you were to touch or hit a rock, it wouldn't really have a an autonomous response um, the way that a fish would. If you touch or, or you hit a fish, that fish responds. It moves, you know, violently, um, and that is uh, a reflection of its consciousness. Um, it has a nervous system. It's a electrical energy. Electrical energy, I believe, has some something to do with the definition of consciousness. Um, I, I think it's I, I think it's probably impossible to to for consciousness to occur without the presence of electrical energy or or some type some form of of electricity. Um, it's it's theorized that consciousness began uh, as some type of interaction between lightning and water. I don't know if that's the truth, but but we know we've we've broken down the fundamental ingredients for life forms for consciousness but we still don't know precisely where it comes from we can't um we can't pinpoint the exact thing that makes something conscious or unconscious And that's that's you know that's the mystery that religions make inaccurate guesses of, and and science is is constantly mystified by. So would you call like the Earth some random fluke? That no. Chance happened to work out no, I don't think consciousness is random. I think it's um, yeah, but and this is just this is a guess, but I I think it's an ine- inevitable product of um, of the chemistry of the universe. And it is, um, it's, it's more random in the sense that obviously not every planet has, you know, life forms on it, but I think it is inevitable that life arises from the chemistry, the nature of, I mean, we just, just from the knowledge that we are made of, of the same basic elements that stars are made of. So if you have a star, you have all of the main ingredients for consciousness or for life. Um, and there's countless numbers of stars in the universe. I think it's an inevi- it's an inevitable um, occurrence. Life and consciousness. So do you feel like it was planned? Like- planned. That's that's the definition of God that I don't necessarily use. Um, that he's an aut- autonomous pl- um, consciousness that plans or maps this out the way that an that an artist paints or or you know um or that a programmer programs i think when i use the word god i'm talking about the universe and the universe programs itself so my definition of god is that god creates itself it it is more of a of a it's a program that already existed because who controls God's conscious consciousness? If you were to if you were to ask that to a Christian, you know, um, who controls God's consciousness? The Christian would say God controls God's consciousness. But that's that's like that um, uh, what you were learning in uh, in set theory that when you have a set that contains all s- sets, um, that set has to include itself that set of numbers. So um so if you have if God contains all phenomena then God inevitably contains himself too. But if God or if God controls all phenomena and God has absolute control of himself um that control has to be separate from from God himself. That's this, this it's the same see human humanity is is the most intelligent form of consciousness that we're aware of. 
and a, a human being is not able to fully control you know their every action we're responsive in in different ways to different stimuli and and events and um uh i guess it's it's the same way that that where if you know if we we make mistakes you know it's it's inevitable for us to make mistakes we will you know we it's because we don't have an element of con- we are not separate from ourselves we don't have that element of control that separate element of control and we can establish a very high degree of control but no matter what um we will never have total control over the des- decisions that we make because we'll never be completely separate from them we will we will always have a subjective experience and consciousness itself comes with subjectivity it's the price of consciousness subjectivity is is inevitably paired with consciousness do humans have like a universal purpose um the word purpose is is uh is too vague when i when i use the word purpose or or reason like is there a reason that the universe exists is there a reason that humans are here? You know how someone says there's a there's a good reason for everything, you know? Everything happens for a reason. My statement would be the reason the reason or the purpose of life, the purpose of life is that when is that 1 plus 1 equals 2. It's it's inherent in the nature of life itself. The purpose of life is that if you um inject a a fertile um, egg with a, a sperm cell, then that egg will become a fetus and and grow and become you know more life. The purpose of life is that when you when you drop a hat to the ground, it, it falls. You know when you let go of a hat, it falls. That's it's inherent in the nature of the universe. Um, to speak about it any other way is to take your eyes off of um, the the scientific reality that governs all phenomena, and that phenomena is indifferent to any particular um, segment's uh, will or desire. If we're segments of reality, reality itself is indifferent to what happens to our subjective segment 